So in the last video, we took a look at how compressors can not only be used as tools and correctional devices, but as effects and how we can use them creatively to really alter our sounds. Now, the same goes for EQ and filters. I mean, filters are obviously an effect already, but you might not think of the humble equalizer as an effect, but you can definitely use it in this way. And that's what we're gonna take a look at now. So I've got the same drum track as we used in the last um, last video and we've just got this compressor that we're using as an effect i've toned it down very slightly but still it's pretty heavy so we'll have a listen to that now so it's highly pressurized you know we've got a really stylized sound there and it's uh, something that's pretty popular in modern productions and something you might want to might want to try yourself um, and then I've got a disco loop, I've got a guitar, and I've got a vocoded vocal here, um, just to make up a really small project to show you these in action. Um, and I'm going to show you some filtering. And if we click on the disco loop here, you can see um, Ableton Live's auto filter. Now, this is already, you know, a special effect. Um, so this isn't really what I'm trying to show you here, but filtering is off some, something that's, you know, obviously an effect and something that people love to use to get those special effects sounds. Um, if we listen to this straight away, you'll know what I mean. It's great, you know, we've got that sort of spacey auto filter sound going on. Um, it's a resonant filter, so we can ramp that resonance up to get that sort of squeal and uh, added harmonics and maybe a little bit of saturation. It's got an envelope follower, which I'm not actually using here. Uh, and then we've got this really interesting LFO sample and hold section. Um, so I've got a synced LFO uh, running at 3 sixteenths, and I've got the phase offset, which basically means it's working as an auto panner as well. So with this amount turned up, you can hear it panning around and you can hear the, um, the cutoff frequency of the filter here being changed in time with the music. So we get this um, really cool effect. <laughs> So great, you know, this is an obvious effect and this is what that plugin's for. It's not for really, you know, correcting problems or treating problems, it's for creating special effects. But if we look at something a little different, we've got the EQ8 and it's an eight band filter, or it can be. And um, I've got four bands activated here and I'm really realistically only using three of them. So I'll probably turn this number two off, there we go. So, you know, when you load these EQs up, you're probably going to be thinking about altering sounds, you know, slightly um, enhancing areas or cutting areas. But, you know, they can be a lot more intense than that, and especially this one. Um, so we've got high and low pass filters on the bottom. If we select this one, you can see that I've got a high pass filter activated on this end um, and a low pass activated on this end. And again, you can ramp these cue points so you can almost use it like a resonant filter. So if we listen to this guitar in action... <laughs> So there you go, resonant, high pass and low pass filtering. And it sounds really good. And you've got a little bit more control than you have in the, in the filter, a little bit more scope and the display's really great. So if you want a slightly different sound, you could try this. Um, we've also got band pass filtering, technically. Um, if we ramp up the cue point on a, uh, a sort of a mid-range EQ, we can sweep this along. <laughs> And then in minus in the minus area, we've got a notch filter. So, you know, pretty much every type of filter can be created using the CQ. Um, and, you know, combine all these together and maybe um, add some automation and you've got a really interesting sound. Um, I've done s similar sort of stuff here on the vocal, um, although I'm using the EQ3, which is a really cut down version of um, Ableton Live's equalizers. But I tend to use these live and they're great for um, attaching to um, a controller and really great for just quickly um, editing a track. Nice and simple, so let's...
So it's just one knob for each the uh, low and high filters. And when you use this, make sure that they're switched off here in the main EQ section, otherwise these, this area won't work. And then you can have a 24 or 48 dB curve, so a slightly more intense or slightly less intense curve. Um, and then put all this together and you, know, you can really get going on uh, editing your sounds in the mix. So you can hear this is more intense than a standard EQ. It's more of an effect and it's definitely more, more creative. So if you want to get into this creative processing, don't just go straight for the auto filter. Try some of the EQs and try linking them to your uh, control surfaces. So that's the dynamics and equalizers as effects. Next, we're going to look at everything else we haven't covered and I'm going to call it the best of the rest. We're going to be looking at the frequency shifter, the resonators and uh, one of my favorites, the beat repeat plugin. <laughs> 